The next president is likely to have two new Supreme Court nominees. Two more. Two more. He's already appointed two that have been very negative in terms of the rights of individuals. The idea that if he's reelected, he's going to appoint two more fine flags upside down is really I, I, I really mean it. There's could this be could this be the scariest part of all of it? Well, I think it is one of the scariest parts of it. Look, the Supreme Court has never been as out of kilter as it is today. Well, first off, uh, Donald Trump appointed three uh, Supreme Court justices, uh, Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh, and Amy Coney Barrett. Uh, but this argument that because they're conservative that they have sent uh, the court in a wildly crazy direction, of course, is in the eye of the beholder. Tom Tillis doesn't quite buy that. The North Carolina Republican sits on the Senate Judiciary Committee, among others. Senator, what did you think of that slap? Uh, you know, I, I think that uh, Biden's trying to read from the same playbook as Schumer in terms of politicizing the court. I believe this court has been very even-handed. You saw a, a, a judgment just last week uh, that didn't have to do with the substance of the matter. I'm talking about the bump stocks right. uh, uh, reg. But, uh, you know, you've got conservatives saying these folks are liberal. They, that they're actually interpreting the law. I've, I've been here for four Supreme Court nominations, and I'm very proud of my support for Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, and Barrett because they're interpreting the law and calling balls and strikes. And I think that Biden's trying to politicize the court and uh, try to win some votes over it. I think it'll backfire on them, too. You know, they try to zero in on the Justice Alito, the flag thing, of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, Clarence Thomas and gifts and all the rest and saying, all right, this is what you get when you put conservatives on the bench and they frame it that it's only conservatives who draw this type of controversy. That's simply not the case. But what do you make it's, of that? You know, this is a, everybody needs to realize that uh, this whole politicization of, of the court really started with Schumer back in the early 2000s when he devised the strategy for denying uh, W. Bush nominations. Before that, keep in mind, Clarence Thomas uh, did not have the filibuster used against him, but Chuck Schumer decided that they needed to politicize things, which ultimately led to the nuclear option for the uh, uh, judicial, it's called the executive calendar, but largely for judicial nominations. He's just trying to politicize things again. But we are where we are today because Chuck Schumer chose this. And now a few years ago, he gets on the Supreme Court steps and says, you have released a whirlwind and he named justices by name, a separate and equal branch. That's pretty clear raw politics. And that's all the, the that's all we're hearing from Biden. I'm wondering as well, Senator, we're still waiting here from the Supreme Court, a largely conservative court, to your point at the outset of this interview, that's going to weigh in on presidential immunity and whether it applies to Donald Trump. A decision could come soon or it could come later, but even if it comes later, uh, it could play to the former president's benefit in that it would push off any, any you know, uh, adjudication until after the election, if, if, if even then. What do you make of that? Uh, you know, where the, the, um, uh, I, I think that one of the things that I try to focus on, Neil, I want to answer your question, but sure. I think that the Democrats want to shift attention away from what I consider to be the triple play, a failure on the border, a failure with this economy, and a failure with national security. And Democrats are going to try and do everything they can to tempt undisciplined Republicans into talking about things other than that. Everything that they do that's focused on the court is a political stunt. If you want to go back and compare notes about maybe a, 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 an action by a conservative judge, I can go back and find you numerous examples of Democrats, whether it's an ethics question, all these things that have been used to attack uh, conservative judges, I can find an analog on the Democrat side, uh, if we're going to be intellectually honest with ourselves. But at the end of the day, they're trying to do everything they can to shift attention away from the failure of this administration on the things that are going to motivate people to vote for President Trump in November. Uh, having said that, on this immunity thing that the court is weighing, you get the sense that they are not going to come down on, on Donald Trump's side here, that it would set right. a dangerous precedent if they did. Uh, that all right. actions are shielded uh, because simply because you were president at the time. Do you, if that were to happen, and, and let alone it could happen at a time when it's delayed so much, the issue at hand, the court the case mm -hmm. at hand, would be would be delayed as well. But that they won't take that step. What do you think? 
uh, I, th I think you, that you're reading it right. And I've told all three of them when I met with them in my office, I'm on Judiciary Committee, so I had the, the privilege of meeting with them beforehand. I said, I am absolutely convinced that you're going to rule in a way that I'm going to be frustrated That's at one case or another over the course of your tenure. But I'm going to believe it's because you're reading the law, you're reading the Constitution, and you're doing it the way it should be done not allowing political pressures to have you bow to either end of the political spectrum. So I would honor that. Uh, you know, I could see that President Don, Trump would think, be disappointed. Do you think Donald but, Trump would, Senator? I mean, that would be, he would say, no, these are the guys no. I picked and I'm not happy with this decision. No, but that, you know, lifetime appointments, uh, sure. they, they don't, they're, they're there for a reason. And I'm saying, and, and, the pre, and President Trump would have every reason to be frustrated and disappointed. But I'm trying to get back to a demonstration, I believe, by conservative judges that are pretty strong. And I think Justice Alito has been unfairly treated. I, I think that was a bad decision about putting a flag up, exposing yourself. But, but that's minor. I mean, if you take a look at Justice Alito's body of work, he's, he's going to go down in history as one of the great Supreme Court justices of the modern era. And I just really want to make sure everybody realizes Biden's failed on the economy, he's failed on the border, he's failed on national security, and we need to make sure that we don't shift our attention away from anything else. President Trump, everybody else is going to have to deal with the personal circumstances, their decisions on the campaign. We as Senate Republicans need to focus on that trifecta, and it's not a trifecta in a good way. Biden has failed. We've right. got to be disciplined and focus on that. Real quickly, are you disappointed in, in, in Justice Alito? Are you disappointed in, in Justice Clarence Thomas with some of these revelations? Uh, no, look, I, I would like, uh, I think that the Supreme Court should take a look at ethics and transparency, modernization. They should do that as an independent branch. But I'm no more disappointed in them than I am in other Democratic members that I can go and point to. Uh, fundraisers that Ruth Bader Ginsburg have been involved in, uh, uh, information that I have on uh, current sitting justices. Look, they're all human beings. They made a few uh, judgment errors, but I don't think that having a spouse choose to displace a, something on a flagpole is disqualifying for somebody who has an extraordinary track record on the bench and an extraordinary legal career before that. Got it. Senator Tillis, great catching up with you. Thank you so much. Yeah. You too, Neil. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.